سوف تستمع الجمعية العامة. The assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Martin Vizcara Kornikov, President of the Republic of Peru. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. باسم الجمعية العامة لشرف الترحيب في On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Martin Vizcara Kornikov, President of the Republic of Peru, and I invite him to address the Assembly. Señora Presidenta del and President of the General Assembly, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. In order to begin, I wish to welcome Ms. Maria Fernanda Espinosa, who is assuming the presidency of the General Assembly of the United Nations Organization. I wish her a successful mandate. I am certain that her role will push forward the multilateral system. You have the support of Peru. President, I took the presidency of Peru just six months ago when my country was facing a severe political and institutional crisis that was overcome through full respect for the provisions of our political constitution, making it possible to return our country to the much longed for democratic stability. Just a few days after my mandate began, we had the honor of welcoming the leaders of 30 countries at the 8th Summit of the Americas, the outcome of which was the signing of the Lima Commitment, Democratic Governance Against Corruption. This agreement includes 57 specific measures and actions to strengthen the fight against corruption and regional cooperation against corruption. Amongst them, are boosting transparency, accountability, and for political parties to use banks or bankerization of their election campaigns. This was a call on the countries of the Americas to consider restricting access to public service for persons convicted of corruption. We are aware that corruption affects democratic governance and the rule of law. Nothing can be built on the basis of bodies submerged in corruption. Thus, one of the first decisions my government took was to establish the general government policy for 2021. The main axes of this policy are integrity and the fight against corruption, as well as strengthening institutions for governance. In this framework, we approved the National Plan for Integrity and for the Fight Against Corruption for 2018 to 2021. Furthermore, two months ago, we presented the legislative power with a series of bills to reform the justice system and the political system. This involved constitutional reforms. A few days ago, we were able to garner the confidence and the commitment of the Congress of Peru to submit these reforms to approval through a referendum. This referendum will take place on the 9th of December. It involves the participation and decision of citizens as a whole through their votes. I am pleased to be able to announce that Peru is making progress towards the long-awaited political reform and the reform of the justice system through constitutional participatory mechanisms, honoring the commitments taken at the Summit of the Americas in Lima. We are convinced that only joint work between the state powers as well as transparency, accountability, and citizen participation will make it possible to build the country we deserve. 
In this context, I wish to announce that Peru will promote the adoption of a resolution in the framework of the United Nations Convention Against Corruption and its Conference of States Parties. This resolution is intended to strengthen the cooperation necessary to counter corruption, especially grand corruption and its transnational scope. Likewise, we will promote determined action by the General Assembly for all states to renew our political commitment to fight corruption and to explore new and more effective ways of combating it. Corruption diverts 5% of the world GDP every year to enrich a few instead of channeling these resources to effectively meet the Sustainable Development Goals to the benefit of those most in need. Turning to climate change, it is clear that Peru is one of the most vulnerable countries to climate change. Our great biodiversity is the greatest nat natural asset for our men and women. For this reason, Changes in temperature and extreme climate events such as drought and heavy rains put them in a special situation of vulnerability. As a country, we have worked hard to generate a legal framework ensuring predictability for investments which will have high environmental and social standards from the focus of production, protection, and inclusion. In order to respond to climate change, we need to emerge from poverty. We need responsible investments to continue growing because our poorest population is most vulnerable to the effects of climate change. It was my privilege as one of the first actions of my government to pass the framework law for, clim for climate change. The objective is to reduce vulnerability to climate change and make the most of the opportunities for growth towards a low emission development. We, furthermore, we are one of the few countries that has an action plan for gender and climate change because women are the most vulnerable of the vulnerable. I wish to indicate that we all have the moral obligation to protect our planet for future generations and to guarantee the right to a healthy environment for our citizens. This is a personal co conviction and a state policy. I thus assure you that Peru will continue promoting actions at the national and international level to effectively counter climate change. President, my government will continue working to achieve the sustainable development goals of, the Ag of Agenda 2030. These goals have been incorporated into our national development plan. Our prime responsibility is to achieve them with political decision and courage involving the citizens and the private sector. We also will give special importance to fighting violence and discrimination against women. Our objective is to overcome the structural inequalities that girls and women suffer from in Peru. Our objective is to guarantee their human rights and empower them so that they will uh, have and achieve their full development potential. President, in an international context where nationalist discourse resurfaces, promoting protectionism, discrimination, and xenophobia, I believe it is necessary to reaffirm Peru's commitment to multilateralism and to the purposes and principles of the Charter of the United Nations. As a member of the Security Council, Peru reaffirms its will to contribute to international peace and security, in particular through its active participation in peacekeeping operations. In this important body, we will continue promoting harmonious work uh, resting on international law and I international humanitarian law. For a developing country like Peru, the United Nations are a platform for shared action to achieve sustainable peace, 
promote human rights and respond to global challenges such as climate change, terrorism, the proliferation of weapons, systematic corruption, or illicit drug trafficking. I wish to express Peru's commitment to free trade. Free trade has made it possible for us to generate uh, wealth, push back poverty, and move forward towards sustainable development. We recognize the important function played by the World Trade Organization to guarantee stability, predictability, and transparency of the multilateral trade system. I call on other countries to make the same commitment and to avoid protectionist measures, which, if adopted, will be a step backwards both for developed countries and for those which are developing. President, when it comes to democracy and human rights in the region, I wish to reaffirm Peru's democratic vocation. This led us to, lead, to uh, head the process child towards the adoption of the Inter-American Democratic Charter in 2001. This charter reflects uh, the commitment of the countries of the Americas to the defense of, hu of democracy and the respect for human rights, as well as fundamental freedoms in the region. This commitment moves us to seek paths uh, which will make it possible for us to contribute to reestablishing democratic order wherever needed. For this reason, Peru condemns a breakdown of constitutional order in Venezuela. We do not recognize uh, the legitimacy of the recent elections. We will continue moving forward initiatives in the framework of the OAS, the Lima Group, uh, as well as in other multilateral fora to help reestablish democracy in that kindred country. We reiterate our concern and our condemnation of the severe violations of human rights reported by the High Commissioner of Human Rights for uh, the High Commissioner for Human Rights of the United Nations and the Inter-American Human Rights Council, which report um, ex uh, extrajudicial ki uh, killings, amongst other things. Furthermore, Peru has, be, uh, has been moving forward a case uh, before the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court in order to punish those responsible for crimes committed in Venezuela. Peru expresses its unshakable solidarity with the Venezuelan people and we call for an urgent response to the severe humanitarian crisis affecting Venezuela, which has led to a massive uh, outflow uh, of migrants and refugees in the entire region. My government has taken measures to facilitate the migratory regularization of uh, the over 450,000 Venezuelan citizens who have reached Peru seeking a decent future. However, the scope of this exodus is unprecedented in our region, and it calls for a collective response from the international community. I conclude, uh, President, by expressing our confidence in the potential of multilateralism, international law, and the principle of peaceful dispute resolution in order to respond to the challenges uh, before us, to promote sustainable peace and development, and to ensure the human rights of our citizens. Peru will continue working constructively in the scope of this organization in order to make real the principles and purposes of its foundational charter. Thank you very much. On behalf of the G General Assembly, I wish to thank His Excellency, Mr. Martin Vizcara, Conjero, President of the Republic of Peru, and may I request representatives to remain seated while we greet His Excellency.